island is in grave danger, with cracks appearing around the map and new monoliths appearing, it's all pointing towards one thing, and that's a huge new live event. At the beginning of the season, there was an unusual set of monoliths on the island found at Kenjutsu Crossing. We all wondered what on earth this monolith was. With the latest update this week, two new sets of monoliths have appeared on the island along with even more map changes. These monoliths have mysteriously appeared from underneath the island, cannot be destroyed, but their reasoning for appearing I think I have cracked and they're tied to some new mysterious characters that everyone is ignoring. And these characters are here on the Fortnite island to cause some serious chaos. The first of these mysterious characters is Triarch Nox, a skin that was initially only an NPC on the island, but is now unlocked as the newest crew skin bundle. And it now appears that he was connected to the very first monolith appearance. Whilst the whole of the island is currently sucked into this huge battle between three groups of people, the Peace Syndicate, the River Guard, and the Wolf Clan, which are challenges and stories that we've actually been completing here on the channel, as we've tried to bring them together and stop them battling each other. But whilst all of this is going on, Nox has appeared on the island, and I believe he actually appeared alongside the monolith, and more of his crew have appeared now that there are two more sets of monoliths on the island. The first of the new monolith locations is within the Icy Lake, and here we can find a new NPC called Serenade. The other new monolith location is near the Citadel, and this is a connection to another new NPC called Stikes. All three of these characters, Nox, Stikes, and Serenade, and the three monoliths seem to be connected together, and each time a new character appears, the monoliths appear along with them. When talking to the Serenade NPC, if you're wearing the Stikes outfit, which currently isn't possible, but thanks to in-game files, we'll know that she says, it seems fate has led us to one another, and if you're doing the reverse with the Stikes NPC, it says, Dahlia told me to lay low, so I'm laying low. Are we ready to make our move yet? Dahlia is another skin that's currently hidden within the in-game files that will no doubt be connected to a fourth NPC appearing and a fourth set of monoliths. All of these characters are truly evil and have come together on the island at the worst time possible whilst all of this fighting is going on. Taking a closer look at all of these skins side by side, you can see they all cosmetically look very similar to each other. These skins are definitely connected, and although they're just empty, NPCs on the island at the moment. They will no doubt be coming to the item shop or be future crew skin bundles as well. Whilst we're talking about leak skins, taking a break from the story for a second, there's a lot more awesome skins set to come to the item shop, including the Renegade Runner, a futuristic, robotic, chapter 4 version of the ever so popular OG Renegade Raider skin, the Koi Kingdom pack with a ton of Koi Carp inspired skins that genuinely look awesome, a dog skin called Wendell that I can't tell if it's really creepy or really cute, and that's not all, a skin that hasn't been in the item shop for over 1,500 days is coming back. One of the rarest ever. Guys, this is such a great time to pop code Allie into the item shop to get ready for all of these skins and it's the best way to support me. The code disappears every two weeks, so pop it back in to get a shout out. And the skin returning is the Special Forces, a character that hasn't been in the item shop since chapter one, season seven. Fortnite are pulling out all the stops and bringing not only new, but super old skins back. But let's not get too carried away and remember that one of the biggest map changes has gone mainly unnoticed since the newest update are huge cracks appearing all around the island. These giant cracks and fissures in the ground could be found around the island and all around one very specific spot. The last time we got cracks around the island was actually in chapter one, which led us into the live event where the volcano erupted destroying tilted towers. Since the beginning of the season, everyone's been talking about the mountain sitting near Mega City. It's believed to be a secret volcano currently filled with water that could potentially erupt and cause a live event. However, looking closer at the cracks around the island, these aren't located near this mountain, but are actually located near arguably an even more important location on the map. In fact, not arguably more important, it definitely is more important. On the island, you may have come across this area, codenamed Round Table, and hidden within forests and trees, this area is believed to be the home of the Zero Point. That's right, if there's one thing that the Fortnite Island always has on it, it's the Zero Point. Sometimes we don't know where it is on the island, but it seems this is the location that it's hidden, and it comes with it not only the cracks and fissures appearing around this very specific spot, also additional sound effects have been added in-game, specifically called Zero Point, that are connected to this round table location, making it sound like the Zero Point is starting to come alive again and become visible on the island. 
If I was to make a guess, the connection between these new evil characters that are appearing with their monoliths and the sounds of the Zero Point, the Zero Point always tries to defend itself whenever something attacks the island. We've seen this with Galactus, we've seen this with monsters, and it looks like these set of new evil characters could potentially be here on the island to gain the power, yet again, of the Zero Point. The Zero Point's gonna have to do something about it, leading up to a potential huge end live event and the return of the Zero Point itself. If we're gonna want to defend the island, we're of course gonna need some new equipment. With the most recent update, we got the blue rarity version of the Kinetic Blade with only two charges rather than three. Fortnite added into the in-game files a legendary version of the Kinetic Blade with four charges. This, of course, will be super rare and not easy to find, but will make it the best Kinetic Blade on the island and one of the best ways to get around the map as well. But soon, using Kinetic Blades and ODM gear won't be the only way that we'll be traversing around the island. As with the new Fortnite map, we have a permanent frozen spot. And with that, Fortnite have been working on a new movement mechanic called ice skating. Special movement controls have already been added into the game, including settings for turn speed, acceleration, downhill boost, and more, all connected with ice skating. And in the past, we've seen Epic Games mess around with potential skateboarding and rollerblading, none of which ended up getting released, but maybe have all been held back for the big release of ice skating in-game. If you're thinking that's a bit of a weird thing to add in, we're coming up towards a summer period. Fortnite have also been working on the addition of surfboarding, something that we've seen in the past quite a while now in creative mode of Fortnite, but have never seen added into the Battle Royale Island itself. It's most likely very early stage development of this, as we are moving into the summer period. With the next season and a big summer update, expect surfboards to be available, and although not a lot of the island is covered in water, as we know, boats can also work on land, so expect the surfboards to have some level of movement on land as well, completely changing up how we get around the Fortnite Island. Let's not forget about other movement mechanics outside of vehicles, including hurdling, which has mysteriously been gone from the game pretty much since the beginning of chapter 4. The great news is that new visual audio icons have been added into the game for Hurdling, meaning they haven't scrapped it and completely forgotten about it, meaning we're that much closer to getting Hurdling back in the game, which if you've watched my most recent videos, you'll know means that we're also set to get wall running, hill scrambling, jump sliding, and double jumping. Huge new movement features that will change how we play Fortnite, allow us to get around the map even smoother without the usage of vehicles. So we're getting closer and closer to all of these coming to the game as well. But what will change up Fortnite even more is weapon attachments. We've been talking about this for years now. It's been suggested by the community for years and looks like it is in the closest level of finalization we've ever seen to actually be added into the game. Files were added in with the most recent update that literally says detect if an attachment modifies weapon recoil and also detect if a passenger is operating a turret. Added in are not only attachments that will have better recoil when aiming down sight, but also new new scopes added into the game as well. Imagine picking up a scar and being able to put a zoom scope on it, or picking up a sniper and putting a red dot on it. All of these kind of things are available in other shooting games like Call of Duty, Battlefield with tons of customization. And as long as it doesn't make the game too confusing or some of the weapons too broken, although it would be quite fun, weapon attachment sounds like it will completely change up which weapons we consider to be good, consider to be bad. It sounds like one of the biggest updates we could be getting this year alongside the first person mode that we've been talking about every single week now. With all of these huge new features coming to the game very, very soon, it makes sense for Fortnite to do yet another Reboot Rally event. An event designed, obviously, to bring your friends back and people that haven't played in ages to the game, whilst rewarding you with a ton of free cosmetics. The newest one is set to be kicking off soon with a total valuation of 2,200 V-Bucks. On screen here, you can see all of the cosmetics you'll be able to get by completing the challenges and bringing players back to the game. We've got the Winter Warrior Fennec outfit and a ton of additional cosmetics connected to this skin. And all of these things are pointing towards Fortnite building up to a really big moment. A live event, first person mode, weapon attachments. This seriously gets me so excited, but there's even more. Let's go live literally today. Fortnite's newest collaboration again with Coachella after happening this time last year. This is set to have more than just cosmetics and awesome music packs, but actually its own dedicated website. It should be going live from today until April the 23rd. I'll throw up a load of stuff on screen here so you can see what will be available. It sounds like an awesome some collaboration that will be happening for a few weeks and leading up to the next one, the beginning of May, we're set to get tons of Star Wars stuff, including new mythics, skins, and more. If you want to hear more about the Star Wars stuff coming to the game and other leaks, click on screen here to find out more news and information about Fortnite. Thank you again, everyone, using code Alley in the item shop, and I'll see you on another video.